It is the 28th of September. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, and let's uh, quickly do introduction, uh, introductions again. I'll calm down. Right? Cynthia, could you introduce yourself? This is your second time hanging out with us two weeks in a row. Is that right? I, I teach everyone, it feels oh. like, but um, I, I'm the gifted and talented coordinator, so I have from uh, second grade up to seniors, but my English class is sophomores, and that's where I'm going to start using Youth Voices. Oh, huh. but you do have some second graders, you said? Yeah, I only get to work with them for an hour and a half a week, but uh -huh. I do have the elementary gifted and talented students, too. Interesting. So Margaret Simon is also a gifted and talented teacher. She's having to mute in and out, but introduce yourself, Margaret, please. Welcome. Okay, hi, I'm Margaret Simon. I'm living in South Louisiana, where it's still very warm. And um, I teach gifted and talented students from second grade through sixth grade in Iberia Parish. And it sounds like you're on. Yeah, maybe that could be my excuse. Yeah. <laughs> Go with that. <laughs> and I'm Paul Allison, and I teach in the Bronx um, at a school that's new to me, and it's pretty exciting. Um, it's called uh, Bronx Academy, um, and uh, you know we've been teaching now there for two and a half weeks. So. I'm pretty excited about how Youth Voices is kicking off, um, so we, we'll get into that a little bit. Scott, you're an elementary school teacher. Remind us where again? I'm in a by. small town in northwest Indiana. I'm a student teacher at the moment, mm -hmm. so should have my license by the end of the year. Great. Monica, introduce yourself again. Tell us about your conference, and and I guess Christian was there with you. Is that right? No, nope. part of it. Uh, kids have written a four-year plan to redefine school. We're in year two of it. Um, we just got back from Providence, Rhode Island. We went to the Business Innovation Factory um, conference and um, got to meet up with some incredible people. Um, great experience for the kids. We're planning to go to New York to the contact conference um, October 20th. Christian will get to go to that one. So, and right below me is Christian. So, jump in and introduce yourself. Hi, Christian. Um, hi, my name is uh, Christian, and I'm a part of the... <laughs> cool. How's the soccer going? <laughs> um... It's going pretty good, except that, yeah, this is pretty good. <laughs> what do you mean? Say more. <laughs> I can't play high school right now because of some difficulties. We've got some new revel revelations. Meaning a couple weeks ago, three of the kids came to me and said, you resigned from your math position in order to do this. We need to resign from you know, doing the prescribed curriculum to do this, to do it well. And so we've been through a couple of, well, maybe one, maybe two hairy weeks. Our incredible district, again, trying to work with us and make it so that these guys could be full-time in a cut in the soccer for a bit here um, in order to, they're switching over to being homeschool status um, yeah. just for this year. Interesting. So they've got to sit out 15 days. And then they can play again. Okay. Yep. Oh, cool. Chris Sloan, join us. Chris, introduce yourself briefly again. Yeah. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, my students have been doing a lot of work lately on youth voices. So all is starting to fall into place there. Mm -hmm. And said, oh, you know, uh, he had gone to the Arizona Diamondbacks game to see his favorite team, the Giants, play. And uh, so he took a photo. At the end of the game, it was a real bad game. And uh, he was able to go right down on the 
um, I forget his name, but he's like a pro player and he's known as like Fear the Beard. You know, he's got this massive beard. So anyway, he takes this really nice photo. But then he said, you know, I went to Wikipedia and I noticed that uh, the photo wasn't as good as the one that I just took. So this student took it upon himself to okay. edit the Wikipedia page to make it, uh, you know, he thought he had the better photo and he did. And so, you know, that was one of the ways we started off today. And so he went on to Youth Voices and just wrote. Paul, tell us about what you, you're doing. You were excited about the first of the year with yeah. what's developing with Youth Voices. <laughs> I made a mistake. One of my, one of my students uh, posted and used some language that the elementary school teachers were like, what? And she wrote about religion, and uh, I encouraged her to write a provocative title that included the word prostitute and nun in the same title. Any rate, we uh, it was it was really a, I got to say a wonderful learning experience. I hope we haven't scared you away, Margaret. Um, but it was a learning experience for her, for um, for me, for for us to kind of. You know, instead, it wasn't coming from me saying you can't use language like that on the site. It was coming from teachers saying, you know, I don't want my second graders having to think about this. So that was, you know, that was really cool. And the kids, are they respond to that really well. So I love having the, um, the younger teachers on, the teachers of younger folks on. You might be younger. I'm here too. Fred, is that you? That is. Hi, welcome. <laughs> Introduce thank yourself, you, thank Fred. You. Um, my name is Fred Haas, and um, I've known Paul for a while and Chris for a while and uh, through the writing project, and um, I'm trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to work Youth Voices in again. Cool. Well, welcome. I don't have that all sorted out just yet, though. <laughs> well, we'd love to hear what you're doing, too. Um, and I was I was just in the middle. Let me just also say that one of the reasons I'm excited about this year is I've got these old computers, and everyone who sees them and the people who use that lab before said, "How do you deal with these old Dell computers? They're these big black dinosaurs." But for some reason, it's like having an old car. I <laughs> I kind of like them. Um, I'm familiar with them. I can make them work. So I'm downloading Audacity on all of them. We got uh, headsets and microphones on all of them. We, you know, we're kind of getting set up so kids can do audio. We have the space and the computers to kind of do what we need to do. And the kids are thrilled with um, things online. Margaret, one of the one of the students came to me today and said, "Did you see that story about the bear creating people?" <laughs> So I don't know if she went on and responded, but it was nice to do that. Can Margaret, do you, would you mind explaining, um, is it Songbird a little bit and what you're doing with that? If you can tolerate the noise. We could, we're uh, fine. I Go still don't know it. what's causing it. Okay, okay, good. It's a Songbird. It's a Songbird. You've it's got the squeaky wheel. Storybird. Yeah, okay, can Storybird. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah, it's, it's Storybird, and I um, discovered it this summer when I took a little Edutopia online, you know, class for actually brand new teachers, but, you know, I was listening in to try to learn new stuff about uh, what's available, and uh, was intrigued by it, and it's been an interesting process, because when, um, when we started with it, the images are intended to drive the story and you're kind of limited like you choose an artist and then you're limited to the pictures that are actually there and um, so when Matthew wrote his story that you all so many of you graciously responded to and I'll have to speak on that in a minute but um, when he was working on that story he he kind of cut it short because he couldn't find the picture he was looking for so we emailed Storybird to say, you know, how can we go back and find more pictures? And they emailed us back a very nice personal email cool. that explained that the pictures were intended to drive the story, not the other way around where you're telling the story and finding pictures for it. And so it's a different kind of process of writing. 
And um, and so it's been an intriguing thing for me. Like we we worked with when they were doing their four claw stories, which is where the how the bear made human. Um, they did rough drafts, and I still have yet to look at the rough draft compared to what happened in Storybird, because Storybird was driven by the pictures, and they had already written a rough draft. And I'm I'm curious to see how that how that panned out if if they made changes because they couldn't do what they wanted to do with the story they had actually written. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I had wondered about that. You know, we dabbled with that a couple years or a year ago and felt restricted in that way, but that's their purpose. That's interesting. Uh, the restriction is uh, is interesting, and I and I, at first I was ready to just abandon it, and then when they sent me the email back that was so personal and 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 nice, and then uh, Matthew was just so pleased because they signed it chirp chirp Storybird, <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was a you know personal contact, and so I said okay, let me give it another shot and 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 keep working with it, and um, and then once he received so many incredible responses from people. Um, he got so excited, he started another story, story bird that he's working on to post again. So it's been a very motivating experience for him. He's, he's, he's a young writer. He's only in second grade, um, but he's very gifted verbally. But, you know, to get him to, to write, you know, when it's a boy and it's second grade and the meticulousness of having to put words down on paper, um, the story bird has really helped uh, motivate him. That's great because I don't remember any of those pictures being very like what we would consider a guy would pick. Do you, was are there some? Well, they're very cutesy. I, I see what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's but great. That's great that it's working for him. He's really young. I think you know the younger ones aren't into you know they don't really care that it's not a really guy picture. They don't mind the cutesy. So, Margaret, one of the things you proposed was for people to do something about the fall in their area. Um, is that going to work on that program, or do you think we want to look at something else? Like maybe I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm. I think it's challenging. I really do. Um, I, I haven't started working on their fall pieces yet. Um, we were going to. We're really not experiencing much fall right now. Um, <laughs> But we haven't started working with that, although we did do um, some poetry about a fall flower. But I don't think that's going to work for, for Storybird. I think it'll just be a, a post that they may put a piece of artwork with. So maybe we need, I don't know. I, I can get some feedback on that. I'd love to hear what others think. We can certainly, we have a mission um, in the our space for the K to sixth graders to create a story bird using the theme of fall. And um, it just may not work because it may be limited by what's there. Mm -hmm. And or maybe we can give a bigger choice of different tools. Like maybe people could use VoiceThread and see what they come up with. Yeah. So yeah go, I like actually the guys. idea of a VoiceThread, maybe a collaborative. Can we do collaborative voice threads? Is that a, mm -hmm. is that something that like we could somebody else could add to the pictures? Yeah. 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 That's great. Uh, I was going to say. How, it how works do you do that? For... You have to set up a class. I'm not sure. No, Everyone I... said yes, but I'm not sure how to do it. <laughs> go ahead. No, you Monica. just go. I I. Whoever wants to make it makes it, and other people, I would imagine they have to sign into it, but um, they can just add whatever. You can add a comment, you can add a drawing, you can add a, a photo, a video, whatever you want. VoiceThread is a great tool. Another one I might recommend, and I know you're all in here, the, well, this would be Youth Voices, not necessarily writing a sketch, the sketch, the sketch, and then FU. Um, it's very addictive. Kids love it. Um, you could teach art on it. Um, it's like it's like they draw the stuff, or they could write a story, and then it's video. It becomes video, so you can play it really fast. You can play it really slow. Where, where is that? What was that on? It's Sketch Foo. S K E T C H F U. Sketch Foo. Sketch Foo. Okay, I haven't heard of that. Kids, yeah. 
We'll try that. Fred, do you, you know, um, go ahead. Paul, I'm really glad that Welcome, you yeah. brought up the um, provocative title issue because, um, you know, I'm getting the final approval for our um, students going on Youth Voices, and the principal was fine with it, and our curriculum person was fine with it, and and then I was looking around to see if I had any red flags come popping up on the on the Youth Voices site, and I and I found the you know prostitute nuns sort of a, a article, and I thought, oh, okay, there's a little bit of a red flag there. I mean, I grew up in Berkeley, California, so I don't get shocked by too much, but I'm they have in nuns a conservative there? community Sorry. now. <laughs> So um, what Wait I did, find, <laughs> what I did find really interesting was the um, the thoughtfulness of the comments that yeah. were given to that post, and I really enjoyed reading that. Um, now, what is going to happen to that post? Is it going to? I mean, I, I'd like to know more. Well, Brianna, Tell us more, Paul. Brianna, and I changed the title to. Uh, before, before I said to her, you know, why don't you come up with a provocative title? Her title was Questioning Religion, um, which is a little less provocative. Um, <laughs> and so we, I just said, why don't you go back to your original title? And she said, yeah, you were, you were wrong, weren't you? So that's, that's how we handled it. <laughs> um, that's what we get for trying to meddle. That's right. <laughs> so it's gone uh, back to that. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Um, when when you're done with your answer, Paul. Yeah, I did want to. I did want to say. I I did say earlier it was a learning experience, but I, but what I I hope it's a learning experience for the community too, because Youth Voices is a pretty open place where kids will make mistakes, teachers will make mistakes, and it's like our responsiveness and checking things out with each other really fast and is is really what it's about so i don't know how you're going to play that to administrators and so forth but if you can I, figure out how to say that i think that's what to say yeah. i think that's what's going to keep us mindful and alive i mean mm -hmm. i i think we need to be where that where things are real you know if we if we want it it to be a real learning experience for kids if, if we're only going to say certain things can go up and then, like you say, Paul, the learning experience comes from how do you deal with it? Not so much that it happened, but what do you do from there? You know, what? So. Right. Yeah, and, you know, luckily I do have um, some people who are willing to be flexible and to go beyond, you know, their comfort zones. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're reading Lori Halls Anderson's voice um, book right now, which deals with controversial issues and has been banned. And we're talking a lot about banned books. Um, and of course, it's banned book week, but you know, the kids see a lot of stuff. So I think it is um, a good learning experience to see how this site um, keeps itself, as you said, mindful and, you know, just how it keeps from offending people, how it, it remains thoughtful and sensitive to people. And it is tricky that we have middle school students. Um, more and more all the time on the site, and then elementary school students. So what's appropriate at different levels is is different, I guess. But I guess I, I feel like, as I did express earlier, but I'll say it again, I feel like my high school students learning to be appropriate for their brothers and sisters who are in second and third grade is a really good way for them to you know think about what's appropriate to put up. So I like having the mixed ages, if you guys can handle us. <laughs> but, yeah. Margaret, did you, did you have a response to some of that? Or? Yeah, I wanted to, um, I was involved with uh, Voices on the Gulf last year, so she's really comfortable with the whole forum idea. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I try to catch her, you know, and, and monitor the comments that are going on, but I don't always. But she has become savvy, I think, through the whole experience of the commenting atmosphere. Um, 
And usually her comments are very appropriate and have something positive to say and speak right to the author in a respectful way. And I think in a way that the whole forum has trained her, not necessarily me, but the, the, the interaction that she's had on the forum has trained her to be thoughtful about her responses and what she says. And also when they receive those kind of thoughtful responses, I think it makes them want to give those back. So um, it's been a very positive learning experience for her. Um, I, I did, she did not see the prostitute thing that I know of. Um, we didn't have class today, we had a field trip. So, um, but I was having a meeting yesterday and my supervisor saw it. But she kind of glossed over it. She just said, oh, look at this. And then she went on to something else. And I didn't speak about it after that. So I don't, you know, I don't know if she realized what she was um, seeing, you know. So it was fine. You know, I just didn't bring it up again. If she brings it up, I will certainly discuss it with her. But um, at this point, it hasn't become an issue. So I'm not worried about it. Chris wanted to say something. Chris, you had I, a question. Yeah, good. That's fine. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, I, I had one, but um, I'll ask that still a little bit later. Um, as far as like, you know, having controversial stuff on there, um, you know, like sometimes I teach high school kids, and so sometimes they'll sound off or, you know, start a conversation about the administration, for instance, which is, you know, it's kind of a hot button issue. And, and so I always thought, wow, you know, if these guys really say some of the stuff that they say, you know, just off the cuff in class that should be pretty interesting but um, what's happened is whenever those things uh, those topics have been raised um, I've always been surprised by the maturity of the students when they write in those spaces I mean they they know that what they're writing is public and and archived and so they are pretty savvy about that but um, I think it's one of those cases where the it's not so much the original post that's interesting it's the response to the post and those have always been, I th they've always exceeded my expectations or whatever I thought was going to happen. Um, over and again, the, the students always surprise me. I don't know if surprise is the right word, but they always do amazing things. And in even in controversial things where I think, oh, I don't know about that one, but, you know, I let it go. Um, the community kind of heals itself or, or works itself through in a way that's mature. And then sometimes, Paul, if you remember when our students a couple years ago had a disagreement, sometimes then the teachers kind of enter the conversation too, not so much as like the police, but uh, just as a way to help people think through, you know, and articulate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, what's so hard though, and I'll, I'll, I'll say this one more time, is, is the different sensitivities in different places. It's it's real hard for me working with 17 and 18 year olds, m many of whom are living on their own kind of thing. Um, you know, what they need compared to what Margaret students need or students up in Alaska. But again, that's really a th what it's all about, you know, is, is well, learning it's a question those sensitivities. Of audience. Yeah. And I think students can understand Maybe we need audience. Scott, did you want to say something? Okay. Perhaps we just need different points of entry for the website. Maybe the older students can see everything, but maybe the younger students should only see their their peer group when they sign in. I'm not saying block them from the other, but maybe their point of entry to the site, they shouldn't see the older students post automatically. Even the featured ones, maybe they could just enter their own space directly. Just so you know, in a very soft way, we do that. Um, the Whatever computer you're on, whatever, um, let's say you're on our space, it goes back to our space automatically. So you'd have mm -hmm. to kind of consciously go to another channel. So that's one thing. And then we can be pretty sen more sensitive about what we actually feature onto the home page. But uh, I do want to leave enough room for uh, Monica, you to describe what you were doing at that conference too. Um, but yeah, before we do, sorry, always awkward to 
go back and forth between different things. But uh, Fred, can you tell us what you're up to this year? First of all, tell us what you're teaching and how you're, which class you might imagine jumping in to youth voices or whatever um, you'd like to say. Well, I teach three sections of freshmen um, English. And uh, so that was probably the group that I was going to use. I also teach a journalism class, but all of our stuff is already um, published online mm -hmm. through uh, the, a website because we don't actually print a paper anymore. So we have like a school um, news site. Um, so that's got its own thing. But with the freshmen, um, one of the things that I was sort of uh, curious about, or not curious, but thinking that I was going to start and uh, the similarities, and, and now I've sort of launched into a narrative, an extended narrative, I guess unit. I don't know if I'd really call it a unit, but um, I've just got them like starting to write narratives before we ever get to any kind of nonfiction writing. And um, I thought, you know, Youth Voices might be a really nice place for them to share stories with a wider audience than just the individual classroom and potentially get some feedback on those and, and just sort of see where it leads. I didn't really have a plan yet. Um, the trick is that uh, I didn't know if I wanted to do all three sections at the moment, although I may end up having to do that. Um, because the way that my school operates, we uh, they're really it's a year-long class, but it's really divided up into semesters. And at the semester, the students all get shuffled. And so this, the sections won't be the same. I may even get a few different students, but that's usually pretty minimal. But uh, the, the whole deck gets shuffled. So if I was just to do it in one section, it would have a limited lifespan. Um, a quick one about journalism and how yeah. I'm using that with youth voices. Uh, stories in class for the next week and a half, every day they're gonna um, update something that they learned about their, um, uh, what I call trend stories. So that, um, you know, it's kind of a blog of their idea and then when they're done, you know, that'll turn into a print piece but then also a multimedia piece. But Youth Voices is kind of the collecting point for their thoughts as they develop this long range story. Oh, okay. Which That's is a way we might intersect, you know. Well, the only, the other, see, one one issue I have with the journalism class is, well, one, I co-teach it, but beyond that, um, we've got uh, 25 kids with iPads this semester. They, they it's like we're sort of trying out a, a sort of one-to-one -one iPad thing, so to be honest with you, that class is really, really squirrely right now, <laughs> um, yeah. dealing with all of that. I mean, it's fun, and it's kind of cool, but it's it's a handful. Maybe when yeah. they settle down, then. Yeah. You know. Hey, are you squirrely too? Is it just them? Uh, no, I, it's it's a it's definitely uh, challenging um, because we got them. Uh, we didn't get a lot of time to plan, and we didn't ask for them. We just sort of had them. They, which you know, it's great. We're not like ever got the devices, so I think we. I mean, I think I got mine two weeks before we actually started school. It'll pan out. Yeah. You'll, you'll it will. With something. So it's a it's definitely exciting though. I mean, it's uh there's a lot of there's just a lot of uh oddball negotiating because we had a certain amount of money and then the way um, we have to negotiate buying apps and everything it actually got more complicated than it needed to be do you know about the Aris app well, that's where I'm at sorry what's that just a quick just a, a squirrel went by no um, oh. the, <laughs> what are those things called um, the the QR design Q, yeah so they can they can put those codes on different things out in the world and then create like a a game to go around um, in different uh -huh. geographic places. Anyway, just in case you need more squirrels to go, is that is that <laughs> what you meant by that? It's like you know the dog who goes squirrel. There, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think. Just, <laughs> yeah, it's very. I mean, one we have to kind of it, 
the one challenge that we have now is because they all have them in their hands constantly. And, you know, when there are times where we actually are trying to communicate something with them. And maybe Christian would like to speak to that because I think a lot of what I'm finding out in my old age is that um, it's really more of my problem because I, I can't continue talking when I think they're not listening. When hmm. a lot of times they're full well listening when it appears that they're not listening. So, Christian, do you have anything to say about that? He's got a class full of 25 that all have iPads. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm there, Chris. Your, your sound's off. Sorry, I turned it off. Very good. Okay. Uh, about people not listening and listening? Yeah. Yes. Or, yeah. About how hard it is to, to listen and what... I mean, we've experienced it just now watching you fidget all over the place. So oh, tell sorry. us about your bird's eye view of <clears throat> listening to the adult, adult world talk and how it's different if you have like a iPhone in your hand. And um, It's really hard because like Michael will always try to come in and talk to me while I'm working on the video and it'll be really hard. Or when I'm like doing something and like I'll have like the laptop in my hands. And I'll just be, I'll like see something really cool on the laptop and then like I'll forget. But, but I, but that might just be me because like, I don't know, I just like won't pay attention to her when I have like the laptop. And it's better when I, I go into her and like talk and then it's easier for me to listen to her. That's, that's one, one part of it. But the other part we were talking about is, um, how important it is for kids and especially boys from the research from back I don't know if it's changed now to be doing something while they're listening I mean and and I think we've we've probably all heard that but you know that it can be to your advantage it can be to your disadvantage it can be to your advantage so yeah I mean at this point the the biggest reason why we had to we had to sort of like rein them in was just because we were going through a lot of procedural kinds of information and uh, we're using a lot of different tools. And I mean, even one of the kids was like, I can't keep track of all of these things. Like, what? I, I, there's too many. I can't handle this. <laughs> so it was, it was a lot more procedural stuff. But I'm going to go and how to upload them. And Yeah, and if you can give them some visuals on that too, and you probably do already, but I find that that's what I always need too. Is I'm I'm so much more visual than I am auditory, and uh, you know you can give it to me auditory, but I need to see it visually too. Well, we lucked out actually because we have like a camera kit and everything that we can hook. So we hooked the uh, we hooked the uh, one of the kids. We had one of them just step up and use their iPad with the LCD projector and walk through what they were supposed to do and um, it, it actually it worked sort of pretty pretty well actually just the other day Good. yeah and Scott I'd say there's probably even already a YouTube video out there <laughs> there's so many of them you can I know that's what these guys use a lot yeah about procedures, yeah. I I don't know if you guys are following but Scott just said make a YouTube video with the information then let them go yeah that's a good idea Great idea. Yeah. Actually, it? I forget the app. I just got an app that uh, will do like screen captures with the iPad, which is uh, kind of nifty. Um, I, is this new to you too? Um, I, well, I mean, I you know, I had uh, hacked mm -hmm. an iPhone and messed with mm -hmm. that for you know over a year, so it wasn't a really big, uh. Uh, really big jump. You don't you don't need an app to like take a uh, screenshots for like. Like uh, the the iPods, the iPod touches, or like the iPads, or like the iPhones. All you need to do is press like the lock button, and then the like circle at the same time, and then it'll take a picture, and then it'll go to your photos. Photos, and then just kick them out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, okay, okay. So. No, that was helpful. Thanks, Christian. Monica, do you want to talk more about the uh, conference you're at? Did Scott, I, has Scott said enough of what he wants to say? I don't feel like we've heard much, much from okay. him. What's going on with your, what do you have, about 10 weeks left? Is that right? 10, 11 weeks? 
Yes, sir. Yeah, about 10 weeks left in student teaching, and I, I'm trying real hard to get them to write for an audience more than just the hallway, and they're starting to get the hang of it. We've published a little bit of their work online, and it's starting to make a difference, and hopefully in a week or two we'll be able to publish some. So I'm working in that direction, but right now I'm just good just sitting here listening. I'm learning a lot. Thanks. Well, careful with the provocative titles when you do those things. <laughs> okay, yeah, we have all, I'll keep the third graders in line. And then, Chris, does your question fit in here now, or you, you still have it? Yeah, um, I was just wondering, uh, everybody who's on here, if, you know, first of all, if they were using youth voices, and if so, um, you know, what's, where one else was, uh, like, Monica, are your students putting anything on there? Not right now. I've okay. joined, I joined maybe a year ago, um, just to check it out. Um, but no, they're not, not right now. Um, we're actually in the process of writing a book. And um, so we're, you know, dealing with admin stuff. And we have this free space now. But, you know, there's, we're dealing with some other stuff right now. So no. Okay. Don't, yeah, because I just came about. across some posts by somebody's students, but uh, they don't have a student, you know, school name. So I was just wondering if anyone here. No. Yeah. Well, Maybe Christian will be intrigued now that he knows that he can write about prostitutes who are nuns or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Chris, if you, if you do go to, if you edit that student's um, account and then go to bio, mm -hmm. you should be able to see what school they're from. Um, unless I'll they double were, check. Unless then. they went in a long time ago. But that that's one possibility. And then that putting putting that one sentence th that I'm a student into the bio at mm -hmm. this school into the bio is what I'm trying to, m to, to make that happen until we can get the technology to catch up. Got it. Um, okay. So Providence was us taking um, a rough draft of our book and Dan Pink, um, oh gosh, now I've got a mind blank, Umar Haig, um, Dana Boyd was going to be there. She wasn't. So was Lisa Gansky. Uh, Dale Stevens, uh, Dennis Litke, um, just a bunch of amazing people there. Uh, a really good connection that we made, um, for those of you who don't know, these kids wrote this four-year plan, and the fourth year is the city as floor plan, which is very similar to Dennis Litke's The Met. Um, it has pre-K through eight being a vast exposure to things like an unschooler or a de-schooler would do. Um, you know, the one-to-one -one mentorships, listening to kids and then strewing something the next day. Um, nine through 12 is like a quasi college and 12 plus is like a quasi career. So last year when I went to Biff at Providence, um, I met this lady and we became, in fact, this year the kids were like, what did you do with us without us last year? I mean. You know, who did you hang out with? And I told him about this lady. Um, and then when we met up this year, she was standing next to Dale Stevens. I don't know if any of you guys know who Dale Stevens is. He started on college. He was also one of the Thiel Prize winners of $100,000 um, to drop out of college, although he had actually dropped out before that. Um, so I was really looking forward to meeting him and having the kids meet him. And this gal, Catherine, and him are standing next to each other um, the second day. And I was like, you're here. You know, we didn't know if each other was going. And one thing I wanted to connect with Dale about was Rad Matter. I don't know if you guys have heard about Rad Matter. It hasn't officially opened yet. Um, their tag is Life is Rad Career for College Age Kids. To Dale, we'll come to find out it was this friend. And we had actually sat together last year at Biff coming up with the title for it. And I didn't realize it was going to be this. Um, but that was a great connection because we are a pre-K. We're, we're all ages that we're trying to do this. And um, that was a great connection. Uh, the kids, it was great for them to um, go to a space where they were considered professionals, you know, and people would lean into them, you know, to hear more of what they had to say. Um, so traveling and meeting people on the airplane and on the train, um, just incredible for them to be able to experience that. So we're taking now, firming up the book and taking it to New York. Um, so that's our youth voices, is getting out this plan that we feel like will change um, education. 
based on five elements that we feel like you know are essential to to all that. So Christian will be going with us to New York. Christian, do you want to share anything about that, or how about the videos that you're working on on the house? Um, your your voice is off again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I just take it off so I don't. Um. Um, uh, my videos, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. There's, what, what, what should I say? Okay, well, um, DML Central has asked us to post what we've been doing because they've been watching us for a year. So we've been posting on our third post, uh, Jeff Brazil, who's been incredible, kind of nudging and saying, this is what, you know, would be really good to write about. He said this third post should be about the BU house. Uh, this guy in town has been so kind to let us have this house built in 1910, 2,500 square feet for the lab this year, moving downtown so the kids can walk to apprenticeships. And um, Jeff suggested we have this post be about the BU house because it really is a physical manifestation of the web, you know, and it's showing how we can intermingle not only kids' eclecticism, but the web and, and reality. Um, so this next post, we're going to try to show people what that's like, because we've had several people that have tried to follow us for a couple of years, not knowing what the heck we're doing, come to the house and say, okay, I kind of, I kind of get it now. So Christian was going to work on a virtual tour of the house, and then he came up with something more brilliant. There's your segue. Okay, so, um, I don't know, I, just, I was just thinking, like, um, for people to understand what the lab is about, they gotta know like what we're doing. That's kind of like, and for them to know what we're doing, I just chose uh, my friend Ian. How are you doing it in the lab? And so far, the videos are going pretty cool. So he's just like talking about all the stuff he does. He'll be like learning Italian on live mocha for like an hour or two. And then he'll be playing the piano and learning off YouTube. And then he'll be signing with people, trying to help deaf, deaf teens. And then he'll be singing. Then he'll be playing soccer. And then I'm just gonna like, it's, it's all his. There, those are all his paths. Thanks, Christian. I could, Christian, I could, I could picture most of that. The signing with deaf students. How does he do that? How does he connect with those students? He knows how to sign. He he learned sign language. Mm -hmm. he learned. I think he wants to know where he, he pulled out, where he got those deaf students to sign with. Right, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't Peter, know. I, uh, Peter CSU, is amazing. I, I don't know. He just finds me. I don't know. He finds people. You got to go. You got to ride on a, a plane with him. I mean, he's met 50 people by the time the plane lands. How he does that, I don't know. And he needs his own business card, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So he just, he finds, he loves people, and he finds people that he connects to. He talks to everyone. One of the things that's really amazing on the way back, um, he said to me, I, I don't know what it is about me, but I get, I get really sad that when I leave people that I just met. I mean, he says, those could be the people that in 10 years you go, haven't we met before? Um, but this is key, and this is key to what we're doing in the lab. He said, but even if we do meet again, we're not the same. And he's the one that last year taught us, because he said it's not about finding your passion. It's about making yourself. And that fits with what he said after the plane ride, that he knows people are making themselves continually. We're all in perpetual beta, so we're never the same. So he is someone who has a zest for living every day to its fullest. So he finds people. And, and so I, I'm still confused because, no, it's, it's wonderful what you're saying, uh, but so the deaf kids are actual deaf kids or they're online? A combination. Um, uh -huh. What we're trying to promote and perpetuate is learning as you live, you know, very de-schooling, very ILIC. And so... Yeah, being about in the community and talking to, to people and finding out that their brother, sister's cousin is deaf. You know, could you meet up with him? 
And he's also gone the route of, you know, talking to people within the school district and where are where are those communities, you know. He mm -hmm. last year they sign language, you know, in the schools here. And so we worked with them and got involved with deaf community. That's not it's just him having conversations wherever he goes, which is what we're trying to model, that that's, that's a lifelong learner, you know. Does that help, Paul? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting the picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cynthia, could you say a little more about, if you don't mind, um, about where you are and what you're up to? I think we well, it's funny didn't I was, hear much from you yet. I was, ahead, just about to type. Oh. I was just about to type in response to that, too, because, um, I mean, one of the things that's blocking us from joining the Youth Voices site right now is that everything that's a group, um, like an online communication site, is blocked in our Google web filter right now. So, I mean... Like I said, you know, I grew voices. up in Berkeley where freedom was really valued, and now I'm working in this system that has very low trust of anything internet-based because security and safety mm. are paramount. I mean, it's, it's a real mess. But we're going to get there. I mean, you know, the good thing is that the, um, the people that, you know, are in charge of our department or whatever, you know, they're supportive of it. And... The kids, I mean, it's so obvious that they need a real audience. Um, they've done journal writing for their teachers forever, and they're so sick of it. And mm -hmm. they know what it's like to be on Facebook all the time and just constantly be exchanging ideas and information, and did you check that out, and did you know about this? And, you know, they are so connected, and we are so disconnected right now. I jumped into one of Jeff's. And they were talking about that very thing about how do we get a space where everybody will come to, especially because it's like we almost have a, have a space for that and then know that they're going to be on Facebook. And, well, you go. You, you go to where they are. Um, and, and what we're thinking now is, like, again, I said earlier, very Clay Shirky-ish, that we've got this cognitive surplus. And it really is about the conversation. I think it's Dave Cormier that says community is the curriculum. So if, if we can focus, if we can go to where they're talking already and now use some technology like um, Deb Roy uses for his TED, The Birth of a Word, and tag those conversations, um, you know, maybe we're not blogging as much, talking about, you know, now that it's gotten so popular, we've got, we have, we're required to go read all these other ones, you know, and it, it's not really for interest, and it's becoming more of a duty. Um, but the conversation is is huge. That's that's where kids are at. That's why they like video, you know. And so if we can get to where we can tag that and go deeper with that conversation, I think I think that'll be huge. That's why I love these hangouts. <laughs> Good. Cynthia, I just I and I wanted to ask a sort of more administrative question. Ha, are you already in touch with the person who can open the slides up for you? Yeah, that's that that we're, I just started working on that today. So okay. I think that I think that we can come to a fix for that, but it's just um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm just I'm just starting out here and. But what's really obvious is the disconnect um, mm -hmm. between the students' worlds and the teacher and administrators, administration's worlds. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not quite well, sure what else to say there, but um, it is one of the struggles that we're having in our school district right now because we have a technology administrator who keeps everything close to him and protected under his passwords and everything. And then he had a family emergency and he's gone. So that's very, I mean, it just shows the downside of having it be so tightly controlled. Um, so yeah, we're figuring it out. Have you read much of Dana Boyd? I haven't. She um, worked with 
the digital media and learning project um, and Mimi Ito and their focus is going to where the conversations are. So I would look, it's D-A-N-A-H-B-O-Y-D. Okay. Um, her papers that she writes and her posts, I think they would really resonate with you because it's just what you just said, that we need to have more of a connect and it needs to be us going to where they're already having those conversations, you know. Yeah. Excellent, thanks. I feel a kind of like sneaky. Because um, I just emailed the direct the technology person directly and said I'm an administrator on the site and so could you please unblock it for me, and he did. So um, I didn't even start with the principal or, or anywhere close to that. I just went straight to the person who could unblock it for me, and so in a way I was kind of sneaky that way, but um, it worked. <laughs> Or maybe not sneaky but up front, I would say, because, uh, you know, I feel like I am, and I said that in the chat a second ago, but I, I feel like I am an admin on the site because, uh, you know, I'm checking in and reading it a lot. It's part of the class. And so um, literally, you know, we, we are admin roles on the site, but then uh, also, uh, you know, I think we are kind of, you know, we're, we're there and uh, kind of keep an eye on what's going on there in, in good ways. I mean, it's it's worked into my curriculum in real positive ways. What I mean well, by that is like, you know, to, you know, I can project the site. So a lot of times I'll just pull up somebody's work and that'll be you know, how I'll start class that day. And that's, that's a good idea. That's one way that I can get into it right now is just because I can unblock everything with my teacher password, but I can't do that for all of the kids have one on one computers. They've got these little laptops. So I'm not going to go around and do that for everyone's computer, but we can until we get the site taken out of this being blocked. Um, we can just look at it as a community. I can project it. Yeah. I'm going to model final thought <laughs> thoughts and, and say, Monica, that I really appreciate the emphasis on conversation. One of the things that um, I was realizing recently when I was encouraging people to get on Youth Voices is that it's not about um, like just wanting more people to use Youth Voices. It's what I, and, and what I'm trying to get more clear about is that I don't want people to wait until they have the more informal, quickly posted kinds of things on the site and that there is a lot more conversation. So anyway, I just wanted to mention, thank you for mentioning conversation and, and I am right there with you about that that's what this is all about. <laughs> so that's one of my thoughts for this evening. Uh, Christian, can we start with you? What are you thinking about after sitting here listening to all of us and contributing some? Uh, what am I thinking about? Like, like what? Like just. Like What's on your mind right now? Specific? What's on my mind? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, a lot wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <Where's that? laughs> about what we're talking tank. about. You're He's asking for final thoughts. Do you have any yeah, so things that you feel you'd like to? It's really cool. I don't think anything. That... Christian, you know what a rhizome is? Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay. <laughs> That's not what you guys asked, but okay. Okay, so a rhizome is a root, right? A root that grows like sideways. It grows horizontally, and there is no, like, higher point than any other thing and if you were to cut off any part of the root it would actually help the root and grow even further and student is equal and like you just everything is equal and so, just, you, so you didn't really mean that when you just said that we were too smart for you to contribute something you were just joking around with us yeah okay good yeah. just want to check and Monica, you and Christian are on the same account, 
on two different computers right now? Yeah, I just logged in. Okay. You know, I just logged into my Google Plus so that he could get on. All right. So cool. yeah, I'm I'm on Google Hangout. Twi you know, when you when you turned it on, his like he's answered some of you guys' questions, and it says that I answered it, but it was really yeah. him. We're both Monica <laughs> Hardy. That's one of the things I have to work on getting unblocked, so I I know what it's about getting you know working with folks around all that. And once that happens, maybe we can do this with other students too. That'd be great. That'd Monica, you have any other thoughts as we go here? No, I. Well, the the comp, as opposed to the blog, and like um, we had talked earlier about how do where do you send that conversation is basic. You know, we learn to talk when we're young, um, and so that makes it a very rhizomatic space where anyone can join, and they don't have to feel like they need to know what a you know, what a reader is and how am I going to post this and are my words, you know. So that um, and the fact that now um, we do have this cognitive surplus and we have incredible people and to think that, you know, we can't just access them, whether it's down the street, you know, or it's, you know, across the country um, or it's, you know, right next to us. So. Thank you, Scott. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Christian, I'm I'm kind of in the same boat. So I, you know, there's a lot of people here that know a whole lot more about the education business than I do, but yet I've learned quite a bit and was able to contribute some. So it, just because you're not at the same level on paper with a degree doesn't mean you don't have something to offer. So thanks for your input. Hey, Scott. Thanks. Do you know what a rhizome is? I do. <laughs> Can you tell us about it? <laughs> no, Paul's trying to wrap it up. Christian did a fine job. We'll stay with his explanation. Margaret, I'm what's just next? saying, it, it goes for all of us. I mean, yep. it's not gonna, the change isn't going to happen expected. So I'm glad that you joined us, Scott. Thank you. Margaret, what's next for you? Well, I also always have to say how thrilled I am to be here because um, I always feel so isolated uh, with my, my, little, uh, my little children. Um, and Monica, I really appreciate how, how you put that, the rhizome. I think um, I'd like to bring that into my classroom because I like to think of myself as kind of just a coach, a facilitator. I, um, you know, things happen there that are incredible and wonderful. But we're just kind of watching it happen and making it happen and then opening the doors to let it happen. And um, I just appreciate everything that Youth Voices and all of you stand for. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia, your turn. <laughs> and then Chris. Yeah, so I'm extremely happy that we get to do this on a weekly basis because it is what I need. Um, being isolated up here and also being new to teaching sophomore English. Um, I have a passion for writing. I have a passion for good literature, um, but connecting with my, my screenagers as uh, you know, um, I mean, I, I live with two wonderful boys who are 16 and 12. So I've got a little bit of insight, but you know, it's a completely new world that we're operating in and I don't want to be the the one who's just way back in old school. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. And I'm so glad to have the support of um, Wednesday Conversations. And you'll see me in Youth Voices here soon. I think we have I a new title for the show. I have to jump in with a question that I'd like you guys to think about, because this is like, in my head, it's just something that's really brewing that, do, what do you think about adolescence? And do you think that the school system that we now have has created adolescence. I mean, if, if we didn't have the school system that we have, we have all the issues that go along with our definition of adolescence. And it's just a question to be out there in space, so. Well, Chris, go Chris? ahead and answer that. <laughs> no, don't answer, answer that just question. Like, Chris, just you don't need to answer it. Just give us your wrap up or whatever. Does putting people in warehouses in large classes and creating classroom management 
structures, you know. So sure, but um, just to and you know we can talk more about that. But just uh, what I'm thinking about tonight is um, that um, I used to um, think that my students had to polish their stuff more and get it on Youth Voices. Um, but lately, I've I've come to the realization that, um, like I said, you know, every day these guys for the next week and a half are just going to put something that they learned about this topic. Uh, I have to run the habit of the students. So you know, whether it's like go on your own time and uh, do a post once a week and a comment once a week, or do it every day for a week and a half. You know, as long as you can kind of make it so that it's a habit, just like bring your books to class and, and write this thing, you know, it's a page long or, you know, whatever else habits you have, um, trying to incorporate that youth voices into the, the habits of the students. I think um, things start to really gel in the rest of your teaching, I've found. And I'll just add very quickly that I think behind that habit, it, Monica, thank you. I think. Thank, thank you, Paul. You and I thank are, you guys I, for coming. You and I are Great figuring out how how to let each other talk. I appreciate your stepping up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I'm having yeah. fun. Great. Thank you all. Um, we, we do want to mention, you've mentioned them a couple times already tonight, but Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier, who um, started us off on this, and uh, they're at um, edtechtalk.com and worldbridges.net, and this will be published at Teachers Teaching Teachers Teaching Teachers dot org and on uh, iTunes and everywhere else and, and at lab connections as well. So thank you all and we'll talk to you next week. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Thanks. Bye guys.